This video is brought to you by Water Removal Services. Water Removal Services eliminates all the water from structures, period, regardless of amount, location, or severity. I'm going to give you an overview of how water is completely removed and show you some of the equipment that we have in our truck. There are four general principles of water removal. The first step is extraction or the physical removal of the water. Removing the water directly in its physical state is 500 times more efficient than any other method of water removal. There are a variety of specialty tools that we use to extract the water. The first piece of equipment I'm going to show you is this gas powered pump. This pump is capable of eliminating 250 gallons of water a minute or 15,000 gallons of water an hour. It can empty a typical built-in swimming pool in around an hour's time. The next piece of equipment I'm going to show you is this water cooler. This, this water cooler is used in situations where there is water contained in your carpet and carpet padding. It's capable of removing the water without actually lifting up the carpet or the carpet padding and doing any damage. The second principle of water removal is airflow or evaporation. The remaining water is evaporated using high velocity air movers. These air movers are strategically placed to create the fastest drying times. This is a high velocity air mover. Depending upon the size and the amount of water on a job, we can use between one or two to really dozens of air movers. The third principle is dehumidification or balance drying. The dehumidifier is used to absorb the moisture from the air. This is a dehumidifier that we would use on a typical job. This dehumidifier is capable of extracting over 10 gallons of moisture in a day. We, we would use as many dehumidifiers as necessary on a job. The fourth principle of water removal is temperature control. Temperature control allows for the fastest drying times while balancing a controlled environment. There are a number of tools that we use to determine the location and the amount of water. The first tool I'm going to show you is a thermal imaging camera. This camera is able to locate water sources by measuring the temperature differential that water creates. So we're able to see or locate water behind walls, sheetrock, carpeting, or other structures without having to damage structure itself. We are also able to locate water by using moisture meters. Here we have a pin, a pin moisture meter where we actually put it in and, and it shows us the level of, of moisture and then we have pinless which is able, which we put against surfaces and it's able to show the level of moisture without damaging the surface. The best way to remove water from a structure is through a process called applied structural drying. Structural drying is a strategy for drying building materials. A unique plan is developed by the facts and circumstances of each water situation. Water damage is often associated with natural disasters such as hurricanes and flooding. It is much more likely that water damage can occur from appliance leaks such as leaky toilets, faucets, washing machines, or burst pipes. The kind of water or category of water must be understood, which then forms the basis for the techniques used in water removal. A sewer backup, which is defined as water from beyond the trap, although dealing with water, is a special situation due to the pathogens that can be contained in the water and must be dealt with differently. What should you do when a water event happens? Your first primary concern should be safety. Therefore, you should cut off all power and electricity to the affected area. You should try to shut off or contain the water source if possible. It is important to act quickly in the water removal process. Time can escalate the cost and damage from the water. Any valuables or furnishings should be removed from the area if possible. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you gain some insights into the water removal process.